The Lord is great. Larry McCall, color, and the Lord is great right here on Guts Gospel. Not to say a variety talk show with a Christian point of view, hoping that you will have the guts to tell somebody about Jesus. I'm your host, Nikki V, and we do thank you for tuning into the broadcast. Hope that you will continue to tune in Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Saturdays at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The number to call 877 217 5375. That's 877 217 5375. Option number two, get you right to the broadcast, and we hope that you will continue to tune into the broadcast and be a part of what God's doing right here and right now. We are grateful to have an opportunity to uh, praise and worship and magnify God. By the way, Country Boys Barbecue Pit is finger licking good. Oh, yeah. You want to give them a call. They've got barbecue ribs, barbecue chicken, pulled pork, all available. All you got to do is call this number 754 234 4547. That's 754 234. Four, five, four, seven. Uh, they've got all kinds of size, everything that you could just start smacking your lips for. You should call ahead for faster service. It's Country Boys Barbecue Pit, and it's finger licking good. Oh, yeah. Make sure you give them a call. Delivery service is available, so call ahead. 754 234 4547. That's 754 234 4547. And make sure you let them know that you heard it here on WEXY 1520, your inspiration station. A variety talk show with a Christian point of view is where you are listening. That's guts. But you are definitely tuned in to WEXY 1520, your inspiration station. And that's where you will hear about Country Boys Barbecue Pit. Because it's finger licking good. Oh, yeah. Give them a call. 754-234-4547. That's 754-234-4547. Now, the Lord is great and greatly to be praised, and we do thank God for uh, Larry McCullough, and we are happy to be able to bring uh, some of the best music to you, South Florida's best and national best and everything else, independent artists, all those who are there. We had Dietrich Hatton and Heinz, you know, we have t Dog and uh, Undisputed Proof and everybody else. So we got a caller. Caller, go ahead. Amen. We do thank God for the People's Apostle, the Reverend Howard Akins Jr., and he's letting you know what's going on with Harvest Reapers International School's ministry. Here to equip, qualify, and certify members of the body of Christ for kingdom building. The number to call is 754-422-4200. That's 754-422-4200. And we are talking about patient hope. Hope in the day of the Lord. And we're at uh, 2 Peter chapter 3 verses 1 through 15 a and verse 18 and we're at verse 4 and saying these are the scoffers now we're talking about we're still talking about them where is the promise of his coming for since the fathers fell asleep all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation now here we clearly see that Peter's addressing a situation that is already present in his own time a generation has passed since Jesus rose and the gospel went forth Christians have proclaimed repeatedly Jesus has come coming as being near. But 30 plus years since seems like a long time, enough for skeptics to call into question the church's belief in Jesus' return. Yeah, you say you're coming back, but uh, it's been 30 years. they coming back. So you know, if they thought that for 30 years, we got people today that are really true. Because it's been 2,000 years. What's up? If we're going to come back, why ain't come back yet? He should have came back already. Mm -hmm. That's what they say, right? The sarcastic rhetoric of the skeptics is captured here. Today is just like every other day since the beginning of time. Nothing's changed, nothing new, nothing different. The ancient patriarchs, long dead, 
We would see nothing different today from them. There is no change so far. So we should expect no change in the future. Logical, right? It hasn't happened. Don't seem like it's going to happen. Nothing indicates it will happen. Everything that's happened has happened as it's been happening. So why should we even believe that it's going to happen? If you had an opportunity to interview some of the people in Noah's Ark, the day with Noah's Ark, when Noah was building the Ark, and there was word that was coming forth about this great flood and rain and all this good stuff. If there would have been people who were scoffers then, and they would have been like, what's this rain thing? What are you talking about? I don't know what you mean, and I don't see no point. And they said that all the way up until it started to rain and the door of the ark closed and they had no hope and no escape. We have a patient hope. So hold on to that hope. Don't don't scoff. Don't don't be dragged into that logic. Understand that he said he's coming back and he has not failed. This is the logic you ought to understand. Everything God promised he has done. He has not failed to he has not failed to do anything. Everything he promised to do, he did. He is not a liar. He's not slack concerning his promises, and men count slackness. He's different from us in understanding of time. We have a different concept of time than he does. Again, I talked about that earlier. A teenager thinks time goes by slowly, and an older person thinks time has going, is going by fast. So, if you consider us teenagers, because we are young when you consider us compared to God, time is going by quickly for God. Time is going by slowly for us. But it's just a consideration. From the impatient perspective of selfish humanity, three decades seems to be more than enough time to show the, that the promise of God's return is well empty. Yet, in holding this perspective, the skeptics are ignoring certain evidence. And we're going to look at that when we get a little further. So, something to think about before we go to this break. How do you respond to unbelievers who laugh at the false predictions of Christ's return? How do you respond? And a person to person responses, maybe responses in group settings. How do you deal with them who go, <laughs> Yeah, right, he coming back. You so silly. You say, silly monkey. You ain't so crazy. You dumb. People will talk that way. They'll they'll act that way. They'll they may not do it to your face, or they may do it to your face, but either way, how do you respond? What do you say? When you know that his return is imminent, it's closer now than we ever thought before. It could happen at any moment. It could happen to you today. So are you ready for his return? Which is really the more pertinent question. The question is not whether or not he's coming back. The question is, are you going to be ready for him when he comes? Is he going to catch you up in the sky? Or will you be lost? That's the, I guess, more important question that we should think about. Not about the ones who can't see it, but for those who can't see it, what's going to happen to you when he does show up? And now you kind of feel like you're being mocked by God. Just something to think about. Right now we got to go to our break, but we do thank God for each and every one of you tuning into the broadcast. You are tuning into Guts, Guts, We Not To Save. A variety talk show with a Christian point of view, hoping that you will have the guts to tell somebody about Jesus on what's Nikki B. And we do thank you for tuning in to the broadcast and being a part of what God is doing right here and right now. We hope that you will have the guts to tell somebody about Jesus and that you will continue to look to the hills from whence come with your help because your help does come from the Lord and He is the one who made heaven and earth. So why not give Him all the glory, all the praise? Why not submit your will to His? Why not? What would be the good part? What would be the logical reasons as we're talking about logic and, and and finding ways to explain things away. What would be the other than your own lust? Remember, that's what scoffers are led by. Their own lust. My own desire. What I want to do. And if what God is asking for doesn't line up with what I want to do, it's trouble. So we ought to just line up with God's word. That way we can always obey. Rather than finding ourselves in difficulty with the way of transgressing. So. Well, we thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Nikki V. Hoping you'll have the guts to tell somebody about Jesus. We'll be right back after this.
Oh uh, yeah, show me the way, show me the way. Uh, that is a bright side spiritual singers. Title song, Show Me the Way. And uh, if you lead me, well, I'm telling you this truth. God wants to lead us. So it's not about if he leads us. It's us following. He's already leading. We just need to follow. And he is always demonstrating to us his way. But we don't always want to go that way because that way doesn't always seem the easiest. Remember, we like the easy way out. We like the simple thing. As a matter of fact, scoffers talked about that. And they refer to the earth's beginning. Uh, so Peter's response to their argument also goes back to the beginning. He accuses them of being willfully ignorant. Now the Greek text here is a little difficult to translate. But a word-for-word -word rendering reads something like, it escapes them willingly. In other words, you only the only way I can explain this is that you just ignorant. you stupid, you dumb. Because you literally know what the truth is, but because you desire to escape it, you'll make up a lie to get around it. You deliberately fail to understand it. You don't want to know. You know exactly what I'm talking about, but you don't want to hear that, so you come up with something else. And you know people who are like that. Uh, you're telling them the truth. You're giving them understanding. You're trying to give them direction. You're trying to give them some points of interest, and they refuse. They would rather do it their way than what you're telling them, and so they are willfully ignorant. It escapes them willingly. They refuse to grab hold to what they know already is the truth. The scoffers then deliberately fail to note that before the days of creation, the world was covered with water. The land on which we live came out of water by God's word alone. The world then overflowed with water and perished. This is a clear reference to Noah's time in which the world flooded within 40 days. Peter's point here is this. It took not only God's word to create the earth, and it took only another word from him for that same earth to be destroyed. Who should you hold on to? Who should show you the way? Who is it that you're going to follow? Are you going to follow that which cannot sustain you? For his word alone created and destroyed. So you must be willfully ignorant. You must have let go of the truth that you it, that is impossible for you to miss. Let's go to those verses real quick because time is running out. And it's Second Peter chapter three verses five through nine. For this they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Knowing that we've got scoffers, knowing that we've got some people out there who just don't have the first idea, idea at all of what's going on. God says, I'm going to try to keep this promise without the loss of so many, because there's many who may be lost if I do it quickly. Many who won't be able to be received unto me if I do it fast. The scoffers do not believe the truth of God's word. They portray God's truth as a moral fable, fairy tale, fantasy, imagination. These false teachers purposely forget that God created the heavens and the earth. To refute their heresy, Peter reminds his readers of God's creative power. First, he reminds them of how God, by his word, rolled back the waters to create dry land. You can check out Genesis chapter 1, verses 9 through 10. That'll help you with that reference. For those of you who may need help with that reference. God used the same waters that he rolled back to destroy the old world in the days of Noah and his family. He did not spare the old world when his people disobeyed him. And he will not spare the current world. God has already decided the world's fate and declared it be Christ and his apostles. Now scoffers need to be warned that God's word is true. It just is. 
I, I'm not going to try to go through any logic and I'm not trying to go through any special things with you. It just is. God's word is true. It's kind of like parents who were trying to raise their children right, didn't have all the details, but all they knew was that this was good for you. So it just is. You uh, Forget about what you think you see me doing. Forget about anything else. Understand what I'm telling you is the truth. I might not know how to stop smoking, but you should not smoke. I don't know all the logistics. I might not be able to explain all of it to you, but I just know, need you to know, don't do it. It's just true. That's a true statement. Whether I understand about the lungs being messed up and all the other stuff like that, and you getting cancer, doesn't matter about all that. I don't need to try to go through all that with you. All I need you to know is that this is the fact. He's coming back again. Understand this. Get this in your spirit. Get this in you. Now, they think he's forgotten his creation. So they feel that they can live any way they choose. And you've got people doing that today. They fail to realize that God is being patient with us. It wasn't for you to go out and do the wrong thing. It was for you to be more faithful and to get and call others into faithfulness. Scoffers fail to understand that because his desire is to save and not to destroy, God does not measure time according to human standards. God is so gracious, and Peter reminds his readers of this as he writes, that one day is with the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years is as one day. God can accomplish in one day what might take a thousand years, and he might take a thousand years to accomplish what might seem to be a one-day task. Now, keep in store means gathered up, stored up, the Greek text makes it clear that fire is the reason it has been stored. Peter will expand on this concept when we get to verse 10. Against here means for or unto. The burning of fire will not occur until the day of judgment. On that day, Christ will judge all people dead and living. Christians can face that day with confidence because judgment will mean vindication for the righteous. And Christians, by faith, have the righteousness of Christ applied to their account. But Peter here focuses on the fate of the wicked. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, perdition means destruction, annihilation, ruin. Ungodly means impious, destitute of reverential awe toward God. The ungodly will receive the full measure of God's righteous wrath for their failure to honor him as God. We have God's word on this truth. It's a promise he's going to keep. Be not ignorant. It's the same Greek word as in the phrase willingly ignorant. Peter instructs Christians to not make the same mistake as unbelievers who choose to neglect God's truth. Peter alludes to Psalm 90 and verse 4. A thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday. The scriptures teach that God is eternal, having no beginning and no end. The brevity of our lifespan colors our concept of time. The scriptures compare the human lifespan to dust and grass, which blows away and withers. So the question I'm going to leave you with, before we get out of here, the question I'm going to leave you with. Compare our measurement of one day to the Lord's measurement of one day. And you know the story. A thousand to one. It seems hard to grasp. Don't try to understand the concept. Just get the truth and walk with that. He's coming back. And you need to be ready. Bottom line, that's what needs to be done. We thank you so much for tuning into the broadcast. You are tuning to Guts, Cosmo United States. I've already talked to you with a Christian point of view, hoping that you will have the guts to tell somebody about Jesus. I'm your host, Nikki Bean. Thank you for tuning into the broadcast. Until next time, have the guts to tell somebody about Jesus.